Here we've got a nice classic problem involving the floor function and some square roots. I really like the floor function, so I'm excited to do this problem. Okay, so our goal is to show that the floor of the square root of n plus the square root of n plus 1 is the same thing as the floor of the square root of 4n plus 2. So before we get started, let's look at some quick examples just to make sure that this makes sense. So let's look at the n equals 4 example. So there we'll have the square root of 4 plus the square root of 5. Well, we know the square root of 4 is exactly 2. The square root of 5 is not quite 3. It's just a little bit bigger than 2. So here we're adding something that is 2 and something that is bigger than 2, but less than 3. Take the floor of that and you're clearly going to get 4. But that's the same thing as the floor of the square root of 18. Because the square root of 18 is bigger than 4, but it is less than 5. Now similarly, we can look at n equals 7. So over here we have the square root of 7 plus the square root of 8. So those are both between 2 and 3 but they add up to something which is bigger than five, but less than six. So that means when you take their floor, you get five. Furthermore, if you plug n equals seven to this four n plus two, you get 30. Well, the square root of 30 is going to be bigger than the square root of 25, but less than the square root of 36. So it'll be between five and six. You take the floor and you'll get five. So you have the same thing on either side there too as well. Okay, so now that we've looked at some examples, let's go ahead and see if we can solve this, or I should say we can show that this equation is true. So we'll start by taking our equation and rewriting it as something that is equivalent using some tricks about perfect squares. So this is equation is equivalent to saying that the square root of n plus the square root of n plus 1 is on some suitable open interval. So we can say that it's on an open interval bound by integers because it's impossible for n and n plus 1 to both be perfect squares. So it has to be on the interval from the square root of 4n plus 1 all the way up to the square root of 4n plus 4. And you might say, well, what about the square root of 4n plus 2? or the square root of 4n plus 3. Well, it's well known that 4n plus 2 and 4n plus 3 cannot be perfect squares. So that means that the square root of 4n plus 2 and the square root of 4n plus 3 cannot be whole numbers. So I'll just write they cannot be natural numbers. So since those can't be natural numbers, we don't need to consider them as endpoints inside of our interval there. Okay, so now let's maybe square this so that we're dealing with an interval over here with endpoints, which are whole numbers. So squaring this will give us 2n plus 1 plus 2 times the square root of n times n plus 1. That's just squaring that like a binomial. And then squaring each of these endpoints, we'll have 4n plus 1 here, and then 4n plus 4 here. Okay, great. Next, what we'll do is subtract 4n plus 1 from either of these endpoints and this left-hand side of the inclusion. So this is gonna give us 2n plus one plus two times the square root of n times n plus one minus 4n plus one is an element of the interval from zero to three. So just to reiterate, what we've shown is that our equation is equivalent to showing this object is on the interval from zero to three. So now let's start simplifying this object. Notice that this one and this one can cancel because they have opposite signs. And then we have two n minus four n. So this is equivalent to saying that two times the square root of n times n plus one minus 2n is on the interval from 0 to 3. 
In other words, this is the same thing as showing that zero is less than two times the square root of n times n plus one minus two n, which is less than three. So now we just have to tackle each of these inequalities. We need to show that this inequality is true and this inequality is true. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Maybe here I'll put a purple square to say that we're showing that that inequality is true. Okay, so let's notice that two times the square root of n times n plus one minus two n being bigger than zero, I just move things around a little bit, is equivalent to saying that the square root of n times n plus one is bigger than n. So I've moved my 2n over to the other side of the equation, and then I've divided by two. But now we can square both sides and say that this is equivalent to n times n plus one is bigger than n squared. But that's clearly true because over here we have n squared plus n, n squared plus n is clearly bigger than n squared, especially when n is a natural number, which we're kind of assuming over here without explicitly saying it. Okay, so that means we have achieved this inequality here. Now we're ready to move on to the second inequality, which I have color coded here in blue. So I'll make my blue box here to say that I'm testing that inequality. So in other words, I want to show that two times the square root of n times n plus one minus two n is less than three. Okay, well that's gonna be equivalent to saying that two times the square root of n times n plus one is less than two n plus three. And now I can square both sides. So that'll be equivalent to four times n squared plus four n, that's what you get for the left-hand side, is less than 4n squared plus, well, let's see what we get here. We get 2n times 3 plus 2, so that'll be 12n plus 9. But now we can do some cancellation here. So notice that this 4n squared will cancel this 4n squared then we can move that 4n over and we get that this is equivalent to saying that zero is less than eight n plus nine. But again, that's obviously true for natural numbers. So we're good to go there as well. So we've established this portion of the inequality, but that means that we've established this inclusion inside of the interval from zero to three, which is equivalent all the way up to our goal equation. And that's a good place to stop.